This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to talk about how to add integers. Now specifically we're going to talk about positive and negative numbers and uh, if we're going to get into algebra, algebra will heavily consist of dealing with positive and negative numbers so this is really crucial for understanding algebra which is uh, high school mathematics. All right, well, I'm going to divide up this uh, video into three sections. All right, so let's talk about the first section. Uh, let's talk about what happens when you add numbers that have the same sign. Okay, well, within this section, let's talk about when you add positive numbers. Like, uh, we know what happens if you add, like, let's say, 7 plus 5. We already know that 7 plus 5 is 12, right? You're just grouping things together. Uh, when you add 8 plus 3, you're going to get 11. Okay, so when you add positive numbers with positive numbers, you get positive sums. So if you gain some money and you gain some more money, you're going to have more money. Okay, so the numbers are getting bigger as you add positive numbers. Okay, that's a pretty simple idea. All right, let me erase this. Okay, now let's uh, talk about what happens when you add negative numbers. Okay, so let's first understand what is a negative number. So if you have, let's say, negative 3, what does negative 3 represent? It means that we owe someone $3, or uh, you overdrafted $3 in your checking account. In other words, I can't pay for $3. I, I overdrafted. There's... I owe more money than I have, and that's really what that represents. Uh, in the movie Stand and Deliver, uh, Jaime Escalante, the teacher, he says that the negative number represents the whole. The sand that comes out of the whole is the positive number. The whole itself is the negative. So there's a lot of ways to think about what a negative number is. All right, well, what happens when I add two negative numbers? Okay, if I add two negative numbers, that means if I owe someone $3 and I owe someone else $2, then I owe a total of $5. So as you combine debt, the debt grows, unfortunately, and that means that I owe more in the end. So if I have negative 7 plus negative 10, say I owe $7, I owe 10 more dollars, wow. I owe seventeen dollars. Uh, this is like our national debt, right? If you uh, owe four trillion, and then the next year you owe five more trillion, that means you're going to owe nine trillion total. So debt, unfortunately, that hole gets deeper and deeper and deeper. Okay, so that's what happens when you add negatives. It's never good. You get, I'm not going to say a greater negative, it's not. The numbers are getting smaller. Okay, so that's what happens. You, you basically add the numbers together to get more debt. Negative 9 is certainly smaller than negative 5 and negative 4, but it's very easy. You can see mechanically, you just add those numbers together and it stays negative. So you're getting debt plus debt is just more debt. So a negative plus a negative is a negative number. A positive plus a positive is a positive number. Those are kind of nice things to know. Okay, now this takes us to our next part. Let's talk about what happens when you add integers that, have exact, that are exactly opposite of each other. Okay, so if we were to add, for instance, um, how about uh, 12 plus negative 12? Okay, so this means that if I have $12 and I owe someone else $12, what's going to happen when I consider both of these things together? If I have $12 and I owe someone $12, obviously I could pay off the debt. I could pay off my debt, how much I owe, and if I pay off, if I use my $12 to pay off the $12 I owe, I'm obviously going to have nothing left. Okay? And it doesn't matter which negative number is, if the first number is negative or if the second number is negative. Okay, let's just talk about specifics. So if I take negative 9 and I add 9, 
okay, to understand what's going on. This means that if I owe someone $9, right, I have a debt of $9, and then somehow I earn $9 sometime later, I could use these $9 to pay off the $9 I owe, and if I do that, I'll have $0 remaining. Zero is better than owing, but it's certainly less than a positive number, okay? So zero means no value, okay? So, and you can see that this pattern is going to continue forever as long as I have two numbers that are opposite of each other. So if I have uh, 25 and I add negative 25, you can see that if I have $25, I owe $25. I put these two concepts together, I'm going to owe nothing. I have nothing. Okay, at the end of the transaction between those two, I'm going to have nothing left. Okay, so in algebra, we say that if we have some number and we add its opposite, right, the opposite of that same number, when I add a number and its opposite together, I get nothing. Okay, it's a nice little property, and it doesn't matter which way I do this. I could have the positive number first. I could have the positive number second. It doesn't matter, but when I add the two, I get zero. By the way, that's called the commutative property. You could add in any order and still get the same answer. All right, that's a little too much detail, but it's there. Okay, that ends part two. All right, here's part three of our discussion of adding integers. Um, for this third part, let's talk about what happens when we add numbers that have different signs, but are not exact opposites like we saw in part two. Okay, what do I mean by that? Uh, okay, here's... Uh, my example one. Let's say we've got negative 14 plus 10. Let's call this example one. Okay, so if we're going to combine these two together, right, we're going to add these two numbers together, I'm going to make use of a couple properties. So if you remember, I could actually think of it in the negative 14 as negative 4 plus negative 10. Right? Isn't negative 4 plus negative 10 negative 14? Sure. I owe $4. I owe $10. I owe $14. That's what I've got there. Plus I got this 10. Okay. Why did I do that? Because, hey, look, I got two numbers that are opposites of each other. They're complete opposites. We found out that for the second step of this whole video, we found out that when we add a number and its opposite, they cancel each other. So these two land up canceling each other, giving us zero. So zero plus negative four is negative four. Okay, so those, it's almost like those two just cancel out each other to make nothing. Okay, so I want you to think of that, but I'm going to get rid of that slash so you can see it. There you go. Okay, let's try another example. Sometimes we just see a number of examples. Oops, we start to get it after a while. Okay see how the process works. Now, uh, sometimes people might call this common core math. It's not common core math, it's just showing you how to think of this in a different way using a couple properties that are, I don't know, kind of common sense. All right, let's try this problem. Let's say we have negative 7 plus 15. Hmm, trying to add those two together. Let's see, I've got more positives. So I'm going to think of this as Hmm, 15 is 7 plus what? Hmm, it's 7 plus 8. Okay, I know 7 plus 8 is 15. Now, why did I want 7, you know, in, in this problem? Because I could see that 7 plus negative 7 are going to cancel each other. So that's why I'm trying to get this, you know, you try to break up one of the two numbers so that you could see these opposites start to cancel. So 15, it's 7 plus 8. Well, the 7 and negative 7 cancel, so my answer's got to be 8, right? Because 0 plus 8 is 8. And there you go. You got your answer. Now let's try a third. Okay, our third example. Uh, let's say we got negative 31 plus 21. Now, if you've been following along, you kind of see a pattern here. Let's see, I've got... 31 negatives, 21 positives. Hmm, I already know what the sign of the uh, answer is going to be. See, I've got more negatives, right? So I know my answer is going to be negative here. All right, and to demonstrate that, think of 
the negative 31 is being, let's see, that's negative 21 plus, hmm, negative 21 plus what? That would be negative 10. Okay, so if I added these two together, I'm going to get negative 31. Okay. Okay, so I've got 21. I've got to add to these two. Now, see how I, I was trying to be clever. I took the negative 31 and I broke it up into some combination that tw negative 21 is in so that the negative 21 can cancel with the positive 21. And if I cancel those, I'm left with negative 10. Yeah, I know. I just subtracted these two numbers, right? The faster way is to just subtract these two numbers. And I got more negatives. My answer is negative. You know, there's many ways to think about how to do these. And I'm just trying to get people to think of things differently. Sometimes just using the properties they come up with. All right, last example. So I've got negative 18 plus 100. Do you know what the answer is going to be? Well, maybe not right away, but you should at least know what the sign of the answer is going to be. Do we have more negatives or do we have more positives? That gives you the clue. Yep, we've got more positives. My answer is going to be positive. I can tell right away. All right, well, to prove it to you, I'm going to think of the 100 as 18. Hmm, 18 plus what? Let's see, 18 plus 82, right? Isn't 18 plus 82? Yep, that's 100. The 18 and the negative 18, they cancel each other. You're left with 82. There you go. Yep, I could have just subtracted these two numbers and said, hey, I got more positives. My answer is positive. There's always more than one way to do these problems. But there you have it. That's how you're supposed to add positive and ne negative integers. Make sure you go back to mathguy.com, check out our other videos, our interactive quizzes, and our text lessons. Take care.